Hello and welcome to our special democracy coverage. My name is Medina Azaki. Now, 25 years ago, Nigeria became a democratic republic. 25 years down the line, we've been able to produce five presidents. And we've made so much gains, even though some people will say, no, the gains are not commiserate to, you know, what democracy is supposed to offer. But here we are. 25 years down the line. Today, myself and my panel will be looking at the journey so far. What have we achieved? What have we not done? And of course, the way forward as we enter into another phase. I'm being joined by some gentlemen in the house, but they will be joining us on the program in just a few more minutes. But I have um, Dr. Sanya Liu, who is the core Commandant General Neighborhood Enlightenment and Safety organization that is the neso dr Liu, many thanks for joining us on the program again thank you for having me on the program happy democracy day wishing you same here too <laughs> all right okay um in one word how would you describe the journey so far 25 years is half a quarter of a century isn't it absolutely so yeah the cruise is has been on and is still on okay and, uh, I like the word cruise. And, uh, <laughs> Is it we, a cruise? We are on autopilot now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to be a democratic uh, republic. And again, it allows you as uh, citizens to exercise your, your powers. Hmm. Uh, you are enfranchised, you know, to, to, to vote and uh, to be voted for. Uh, it gives you that leeway to uh, examine your leaders mm. and uh, with time, if they perform, you go to the pool and vote them back. If they don't, you vote them out. And today the whole of Africa is seeing, a, especially some part of Africa is seeing a, 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 the beauty of democracy. If you look at what has happened in Ghana, mm. A, 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 a few years ago mm. with the change of their leadership and the, the acceptance later of the leader shows you that uh, yes, the people have the say, the people now uh, can actually decide who lead them mm. and uh, be led by the people, they are, by the, such people they actually want to, mm. to lead them mm. yes. but I want to ask you when you say people are excited the question somebody will be watching us today will say, <laughs> how much is a loaf of bread no, <laughs> today? Well, 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 no, no, no. Let's go down to those simple, you know, basic amenities that people can easily get. So we start from a loaf of bread that concerns the everyday Nigeria. How much does a loaf of bread cost today as compared to 1999? I mean, people from that level will be judging what has happened. Yes, uh, you see, uh, there is there is one uh, ac uh, aspect of freedom. Okay. When people become so free, mm. they get, they become so excited okay. that they start losing the the price of that freedom. Okay. Yes, uh, Nigerians over the period before 1999 were in the junta government, and of course, uh, it's a, a period of decree, a period where there are price content. You have been. Uh, uh, under a lot of watch, mm. you cannot even uh, misbehave in terms of security or any other, or, or otherwise people are just doing what they, they are expected to do. Mm. Now comes a time in 1999 when we went back to democracy and then uh, you now see people can have a say, people can talk, that excitement and uh, and, 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 and the, the leaders because of their uh, well, I say half patriotism mm. uh, saw the excitement in the people and then decided to take the advantage of that excitement. Mm. And they now left the, the, the nation building to their pockets building. Okay. While the people that are still following are still expecting much from them, mm. but uh, they, 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 they with, with time, you mm. know, they became so, the leadership became so clueless to mm. the needs. Of the people and to the well-being and health of the nation okay so before yes. we begin to some of the um prospects that democracy you know has offered um for people you said people are excited so if people are excited they have two freedom freedom of speech and they also want economic freedom so <laughs> 25 years of democracy has offered more 
of freedom of speech. It is not offered economic freedom. So if people are going to put it on a scale to say, let me choose. If people, if people today are provided with this opportunity of say, I want to have economic freedom and I will forget the, you know, um, speech or expression freedom. Don't you think people will go more for the economic freedom? Oh, absolutely, because uh, <laughs> food is life. And um, uh, the, the way things are going now, absolutely Nigerians are suffering too much mm. from the bite of uh, the economy and from the bite of uh, uh, no clear direction of where we are going. Because sometimes you can accept to suffer mm. hardship, knowing fully well that in the next 10, 15, 20 years, the direction that the leadership is taking you to or the pathway, mm. you understand that at the end of the tunnel, there's going to be light. Mm. But this, this kind of hardship and mm. suffering mm. Is, does not actually give the Nigerian citizen that rest of mind or assurance mm. that he's sacrificing for tomorrow. Okay. You know, so that is uh, my worry, and okay. that is the worry of many Nigerians today. When you said you have removed uh, some certain aspect of uh, 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 subsidy from the life of the people to build a better environment mm -hmm. where they will have full security and uh, better life to, for themselves mm. and for the country at large. Mm. And then that is that is a that is a very good uh, project that the leadership is having mm. but whereas you have no such plans mm -hmm. you you can see that uh, there is nothing in, up till now mm. to show that today's leadership has something that is coming up for the good of nigeria no clear cut direction no clear cut direction mm. And Nigerians, for all intent and purposes, is the most docile, I'm sorry to use this word, but we are the most docile society in the world, in the sense that uh, everything goes in Nigeria. Mm. Come with everything, it goes. Leadership have understood it true, mm. and they realize one theory, that the more you hardship you put on, your, on the people, the less voice they have, okay. and the less in, uh, capacity they have to, to drive you. But that's a wrong notion okay. altogether, because... Uh, when a, an earl is driving to is driven to the wall, it doesn't bite. The ship doesn't bite. Good doesn't bite. But when you drive them to the wall, mm. you, there will be a reaction sometime. Okay, um, I want to jump in here. Um, from your analysis, it means the leadership got it wrong. Yeah. Now the part for democracy, you know, including the current you know president. Today he was saluting them for their effort and for bringing us. 25 years but when the same people the ones that are dead or the ones that are alive i mean the ones that are dead will be regretting right now that this is not what we fought for that the ones who are alive will be living a life of regret and saying this is not the kind of democracy that we fought for absolutely when you when you want to uh, look at uh, democracy in this in this country mm. you you cannot forget the the how we came mm. You know, in 1960, uh, the, our, 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 our early leaders, like the Sabdauna, mm -hmm. the Abu uh, and, and so on and so forth, if you bring any of them to life now, they will say this is not the Nigerian they have actually worked That's with. That's the founding fathers themselves. The founding themselves. fathers themselves. Mm -hmm. Because of, obviously, they, you, they were selfless leaders. Mm -hmm. they, were never, they were not accumulative. They were not. Uh, they were giving service, self, uh, selfless service to the mm, nation, mm. and many of most of them died poor. If you want to uh, look at Sardona, Sardona was not even having a particular building, a mm. standard house, to to befitting his status. Mm. Nor will you say uh, uh, Tofa Abolewa had such house. So mm. when you when you want to come up from that aspect, you now say this. They will regret actually seeing this crop of leaders we are having today mm. it, they may be surprised as this is not the people that we actually were we, they were to at the time you know most of these people players we are seeing today during Sardona, uh, some of them were were around and uh, they, they, they 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 never uh, take to the the, the tutelage of their of the of the, of their uh, the funding leaders mm. and so 
uh, it's, it's a shame to say that uh, today Nigerians are uh, our Nigerian leadership is off track in terms of giving service to the citizens, mm. in terms of taking the common man, the poor uh, uh, pain to fill the to fill the pulse of the pain mm. of the people, mm. and to work towards uh, alleviating such pains from for mm. the people. So it is it is a complete. Uh, 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 complete disarray from where we are coming from. Okay. For people like you who protested, who, sh who also fought for democracy in your own way, um, from the military down to where we are today, where do you think we got it wrong? Where do you think the leadership of Nigeria got it wrong? Is it that the excitement and the freedom got to their heads and they felt like, we just do what we like? No, the the the, 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 the why we actually got it wrong is that the leadership uh, became so gluttonic in nature, uh, so self-serving in nature, uh, so unpatriotic in nature, and that's why uh, with the return of this uh, uh, national anthem, I think it will be reminding uh, us, all of us, that uh, we do we have. Can you our, sing it? I, Can you sing the uh, well, I, old new national? Anthem? No, I used. I used to in, in those days okay. when we were in primary school, oh, we okay. sing it very well. But now it's just coming up, and okay. you have to take your time to okay. go through the stanza. But I know some of the stanzas mm. that clearly shows you that, of course, this is our native land, mm. Nigeria, mm. and uh, we are. Do we are, you think that resonates with some kind of patriotism? Do you think so? It is. It is a lot. A lot of it because you see uh, this, this. Do people this, still believe in Nigeria as our fatherland? We don't. Uh, many of us. Or motherland. Many of us don't believe in Nigeria as our father's land, but many of us believe that Nigeria is our mother's land. What uh, is wrong with the father? Yes, the father is not as compassionate as the mother. And okay. because of this fatherland, that is why you see our leaders... For some of us will not agree That with is you. why you see our leaders are just accumulating because of the, they feel the father is responsible. Anyhow you make your money, you will do it. But the mother... <laughs> Is there? She she she's trying to manage things the way they are okay. and keep the the family line going. So that would be without, a reminder. Without, without, without necessarily have to perforate and start stealing and all those uh, drive of I want to be the, the head of the family. Mm -hmm. The mother is there. She's meek. She's she's there for the children. She's there for the family. She's loving. She's she's more compassionate. To the ground. So if we accept, so when we keep singing our motherland, when we keep singing our motherland, it will remind us of how our mothers are so compassionate. Our mothers are very important in all but our. But we affairs. have had mothers who have stolen the collective. Yes, because the be collective resources of their ministries, of their agencies. Because this is some few unfortunate that is, mothers. That that is that is. The, so those ones are not good examples. That is the disarray we are saying. Back. It's still a special democracy edition, and I still have in the house Dr. Sani Aliu. Um, Dr. Sani Aliu, before the break, um, I was asking you, where did we get it wrong as far as the leadership of this country is concerned? And you started talking about um, the new old national anthem will do a whole lot of good, and that it will remind us of our motherland, of our patriotism. But somebody sent um, a Japanese national anthem, and it's just one stanza. And it says, long reign the king. And he was only praising the king, according to him. And Japan has gone far, far, far ahead as far as development is concerned. So if you are talking about a national anthem, changing the psyche of people, making them more patriotic, then it means if you compare that with what the Japanese have, then it means that's not the way to go. Well, uh, you see, every nation with this kind of uniqueness, uh, we are a very diverse people. Mm. We are, that's why that aspect I'm telling you the, the, that we are uh, that Nigeria is our native land. Though we have different and tongue differs, uh, yeah. but a brother, one brother who will stand. Mm. If we had continued in this state, the aspect that aspect of 
uh, Biafra will go, uh, Yoruba Nation and all this will have not come. Because, Don't you think it's because, coming too late in the day? No, it is, when people are already too frustrated? It is never too late. It's a journey of 1,000 uh, miles begins with just one step. Okay. It's good that we are tracing our step backward. I appreciate uh, the so, Zanial, I just asked you, can you sing it? You say you sang it when you were a, 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 in, um, primary school. in primary school. Now you're trying to catch up with the words. Mm. Not to talk of our own generation. Some of us can't even sing the one we had. I'm not talking about myself, but some people. We have seen people who go for, sorry, screening. They say sing national anthem. They get hooked. Now you are bringing this one that is a little bit more complicated. Yeah. It's going to take maybe the whole of this year for people to even begin to sing it. You are thinking of yourself and myself as a people. Mm -hmm. But you are not thinking of our children and mm -hmm. children to come. Mm -hmm. We are, a nation is not about today. A nation mm. is about tomorrow. Mm. If we have failed yes. today, mm -hmm. we should try, we, and we are trying to re retract our step backward mm. to see how we can build it up mm. so that the tomorrow of the nation will be, mm. will be more sustained, more stable, more mm. secure mm. for our children, children to come. I think it's a good start. It's a okay. good thing. You go to the class to start from kindergarten, primary mm. school, secondary, mm. and so on and so forth because before you graduate. And mm. At each level, you have to test what you have achieved. Mm. So, by testing so far our journey, okay. it, in the wisdom of uh, President uh, uh, Tinubu, he realized that Nigeria hasn't gone uh, forward. Mm. We are just uh, two step, uh, one step forward, three, four step backward. Mm. You are talking about food today. Mm. There's so much uh, food pricing is high, mm. cost of living. Mm. Uh, Nigeria has have never had it so bad like now. Mm. So and we are trying to see where is the problem? Mm. Where have we got it wrong? And part of where we have gotten wrong is not reminding ourselves the commitment that we have for our country and the, 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 the space our country has provided for us as a people to exist, to coexist as mm. one people. Okay. Now, if we, if we start go by that way, then there will be the need for us to bring civil education back to our educational system, mm. where our children will be cultured in the manner of mm. our culture and mm. traditions. Okay. I will bring back religion to mm. our curriculum that have been removed and the history of Nigeria that has been removed because today Nigerians are becoming more divided because they don't with most of our children don't know our history uh, we are lucky to be to, to be in, in primary school at the time we were in primary school where mm. we are taught the history of Nigeria mm. and how Nigeria comes to be the leadership and so on and so forth uh, we in civil education and the rest we, we have history in our curriculum mm. and so we are built in the manner of loving our nation mm. committed being commit, uh, committed to the cause of our nation mm. today our children are no longer having these feelings uh the young the younger generations have uh, forgot uh, i don't even know it the current our current generations and our uh, leaders of, of today they are forgotten where they are coming from okay. they don't know where they are going we are just like a ship with, uh, in, the, in the high sea mm. toasted here and there without a rudder no direction so let's start Tinubu, in his wisdom, have brought in something to start. Okay, let's see. Let's start seeing the direction. Okay, this is where we are. This is whom we are. Of course, we are different people with different tongues, but there is one brother who will stand. Mm -hmm. So, from there, that 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 animosity, that pairing of our people, will, will start coming back together, and we start thinking. Okay, yes, the Igbo man will appreciate himself as a, I'm an Igbo man. I'm proud to speak Igbo. The Hausa man will say I'm, I'm a proud Hausa man, and the Yoruba man will say I'm a proud Yoruba man. Of course, we are different in our tongues, but we must stand in one okay. brotherhood. Um, the principles of democracy is um, shared prosperity, equity, justice, and that's what people are not seeing. So when you begin to sing national anthem, our mother's tongue, when we differ, this and that, and you see a segregation of class. Dr. Liu, today you live in an estate, probably, the children go to a private school when you come out of that estate just outside the gate you get to see shanties absolutely isn't it absolutely. you see children in those shanties i know as generous as you are once in a while you say let me do one or two things for you now the children in the shanties look at your own children and my own children who live in an estate who go to a private school who are well taken care of 
And these are children who don't even know where the next meal comes from. I'm happy you talked about next generation. A next generation that is growing up in an environment that is divided along economic lines. That is the danger. If you're telling me, sink, <laughs> we differ, whatever, whatever, that will not make any sense to me who live in the shanty and for you who live in the estate. It will not make any sense. So it will mean you're telling me to be singing mother's tongue while you are having it good. So these are the challenges that we have to address. I think what democracy has done for us in this country has divided us on long economic lines. I don't want to bring the religious lines into it, but I want to look at because whoever is poor and cannot meet up his need, whatever excuse you bring to that person, he will jump into it. Yes, true. Uh, uh, Haja, let me just tell you something. The, that, that word, brotherhood, is the unification of the center. Mm. We have stopped seeing ourselves as brothers and sisters, and therefore we don't, have, we don't feel the need of the other person. We, 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 are caref we are careful, we are careless, we don't even care about how those people in the shanty do exist. But that but, is the question I'm asking. Mm. If we want brotherhood to exist, it means we have to bring back the uh, um, principle of justice and equity. We have to implement shared prosperity. Prosperity shouldn't be divided. It shouldn't be meant for one class. That is what has affected us because people begin to see them. Today, there's no middle class. You and I know that. There is no middle class. It's either you're super rich or you're super poor. The people who can fend for themselves some years ago and be able to take care of one or two needs of others are already poor themselves and hopeless in some cases. So how do you begin to speak brotherhood? I thought that the, 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 um, the, the foundation that is going to be laid is the one that ensures there's economic prosperity for all. A system that encourages people to grow economically that if i start a job to, i mean if i'm a graduate today i should be able to get a job without much hassle i should be able to grow you know proportionately yeah we, I, I just, we are talking about the problem mm. and we have identified the problem we, uh, fortunately the problem has been identified. but bringing a new old national anthem is not a solution no you see let me tell you one thing with psychology okay if you know there's a machine called lie testing machine oh, okay if you are lying consistently and you believe in your lies okay. and you keep lying that testing machine cannot identify it so over time of singing this national anthem will generate a new ideology a new cause in our mind it will bring a new mentality out from us mm. that ah uh, this person that is in this shanty, of course, is my brother. Mm. And we stand in the same in the same need. Why shouldn't I assist him? Why should I be thinking of how to create something that will alleviate his suffering? Mm. For instance, India. I mean, sorry, China. China just decided that we are going to pull out a number, a social amount of people from poverty to become wealthy. Mm. And they had that as a program. Mm. And today, that they have achieved that pulling out many of their citizens out of poverty mm. to wealth. It is possible in this country, but we cannot, we cannot operate in a vague uh, atmosphere. Mm. We must create a foundation where we can build mm. up, upon. Mm. And like I said, today, as it is today, mm. Nigerians don't feel as if they are Nigerians. Mm. Nigerians don't feel for anybody when 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 the north it was suffering from boko haram mm. attack and other mm. things mm. the the southeast was careless about it the southwest doesn't care the, the house of people there the northern people let them keep themselves not knowing that <laughs> it has it will have a, a, a ripple effect now uh, the northeast is is, is is grappling with the insecurity mm. the, uh, the the southwest equally is grappling with insecurity so mm. It is like what what uh, jo, uh, Obama said that the relationship between America and Nigeria is interwoven. Whatever affects America trickles down to affect Nigeria, and whatever affects Nigeria trickles down to affect America. And that was why the program mm. Nigeria was programmed to divide in 2015. Mm. But because of the realization that this is not going to work out, 
it's better we keep this country together no and matter how bad it is. So and the fallout will be so huge it will become a catastrophe in the mm -hmm. global catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see how we can manage Nigerian situation so that they continue the way they are going. Even though they are moving on one leg, mm -hmm. let's keep move, moving them on that one leg mm -hmm. so that the, the globe will have uh, 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 peace. Mm -hmm. Now, Nigeria, as it is, like I said, is mm -hmm. moving on one leg. Okay. One leg. One leg now. Okay. The you know those days we used to sing Mary has a one leg. No. One leg. Yes. Okay. So, so now we are, to, the, the, we are trying to make sure that we, we balance, we, we start curing the, uh, that amputated leg, mm. we start building it so that it will come and start with its two legs. Okay. And the way we can do that is over time reminding ourselves of whom we are, what we represent, mm. where, where we are coming from and where we are going to, mm. and the kind of nation we want to bequeath to our young, younger ones mm. and the coming generation. Mm. And this national item, like I said, told us, remind us that, okay, we are going to give a banner, still a banner that is not stained, mm. and we are, going to, we are going to balance ourselves in equity and justice, mm. and we cannot support the oppressed, nor work for, or, or not allow oppression to exist in Nigeria. Mm. So this ad, these are this, uh, these are the, 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 the weddings that will keep echoing and reminding us mm. of the need for us to actually serve this country selflessness. Mm. Now, as it is, uh, the former, na, the new former national There's a class struggle that you've not been able to address until we address the class struggle. Because what we have today is not obtainable. It is not sustainable. The class, the class struggle, and a mere learning and singing of a national anthem will not do justice to look, that. Look, uh, Hajia. But let me come to the excitement that you talked about. Yeah, um, you did say that um, people are excited with freedom, um, and, and they got carried away by the excitement, and that will be what people will say has created room for groups. Um, you know, the IPOP group, the um, OPC, the, um, you know, insurgency. Did we miss it when we say democracy means freedom of speech? We created um, a vacuum for people to say, I can express my, you know, feelings in whichever way I want to. Yes, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like a prisoner. Suddenly you give him his freedom. He doesn't know where to start from. That was how Nigeria found itself. A, a situation where uh, we are coming from the military regime, mm. where, of course, the economy was very fantastic mm. because the military, they have their own way of marshalling everything they want to, to achieve. Mm. But now, with this kind of democracy, even the president, mm. when he has uh, 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 his own ideas or his own plans, it has he cannot achieve them because it must go through the legislators and now legislators depending on what they represent and what they want even no matter how lofty beautiful uh, a program is uh, they, they have already uh, opened that aspect of ghana must go to them without ghana must go nothing works in nigeria and uh, you would, that i would like to say obasanjo with all due respect to him uh, uh, shouted about that uh, uh, actually was against Ghana must go mm. from the onset publicly he was against it but on the ground he was giving it so that is the root cause of our problem today he's lot, the promoter of Ghana must go isn't it well if you like we because can, we start if, hearing if Ghana can, must go during his own please, time uh, you can, you, well, or the well, pioneer of Ghana must you, go you can call him the pioneer or the promoter of Ghana must go whatever it is it started during his own time and uh, up till today, that is one of our major problems that we cannot achieve anything in this country without the distribution of Ghana must go. So mm. people have uh, learned not to be patriotic, not to be serve, not to be selfless service, not to be giving selfless service to the nation, but rather on the patronage of Ghana must go before they can make, you can achieve anything. Mm. Now, uh, this aspect of uh, of, uh, of politics in Nigeria has actually brought about all the hue and cry we are suffering from in this country today. So, like I said, it is now. Uh, we have to go back to our drawing board. We really have to chart a new course for our country. Uh, we, all, all that we are doing now has absolutely shown us that it's a failure. Nigeria is uh, not progressing. There, since democracy, there is never a time you will say the current government is better than the previous government. Mm. It is always 
people will always be referring to be, uh, previous government at mm. a bit better. Today, mm. uh, if Jonathan if Buhari wants to come back to uh, to Nigeria, you see a lot of people come to vote for him mm. because in Buhari's regime we never had it this bad, okay. and in Jonathan's regime we never had it as bad as Buhari's regime, mm. and in Obasanjo's regime we never had the yeah, bad as uh, Yerad, uh, Yerad, uh, Yerad, 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 regime we never had Yerad, it. Yerad, Yerad, regime, <laughs> and in Jonathan's regime we never had it as bad. Is, so, so is this democracy? So it's, it's, this this is not this is. We are just retrograding okay. in this country. I've never seen anywhere okay. that I would say I've called Nigeria uh, that this is where we have progressed except from GSM. <laughs> All right. Only GSM. Okay. All right. So joining us live um, in the studio is Hassan Abdul. Hassan Abdul is a public analyst and, of course, a journalist. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you. All right. Um, so let me just quickly go to you. 25 years of democracy, a quarter of a century. How would you describe the journey so far? Has it been smooth? Has it been rough? Or is it a mixed grill for you? Yes. Um, yes, no. Uh, these are some contradictory answers sometimes. <laughs> okay. You see, the problem with democracy in Nigeria is understanding the concept itself. Mm -hmm. uh, what we define as uh, democracy in Nigeria is a civil rule. Civil rule ruled by civilians. Forgetting the rules governing the democracy. Uh, we sometimes tend to mix the two together. Democracy and development. Uh, these two concepts, they are supposed to go together. But uh, in Nigeria, to some extent, uh, the two are not together. So we took the civil rule and yes. left the development. That's and what you are saying. Development, not yes. Yeah. Uh, the essence of the governance generally is for the betterment of the people. Mm. You know, to improve the living standard or the lives of the citizens. Mm. Unfortunately, when I joined, my colleague is talking almost a similar thing to what we are saying. 25 mm. years. Uh, I think the assessment is not all about whether we follow the tenet of democracy or not. The assessment is do we really achieve the essence of the governance? That is the most important thing. Democracy might be immaterial if people are being impoverished, people are swelling in poverty. You know, okay, so on that mean? note, what is what, the thinking? What is let, me, let me just jump in here. No, no, what is the no, thinking? Yes. of the man on the street. No, they yes. have the everyday, I don't want the everyday Nigeria. Yes. What is the thinking of that person right now? I want us to like yes. paint a scenario yes. of what is the thinking of yes. the man on the street right now. Yes, that is what I'm saying. I'm coming, I'm just building a background. <laughs> oh, okay. I joined the discussion on it. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, the, the, the ordinary person on the street, mm. or a common Nigerian, which is after its development, irrespective of whether military is ruling, you know, or civilian is ruling. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue of democracy to some extent is too elitist to a common man. Uh, forget about even the so called, look at what is happening now in, in countries like Niger, mm -hmm. you know, Burkina Faso, Somalia, and all, Somalia. yeah, yeah. They were happy the military took over mm -hmm. because of the failure of mm -hmm. the civil civilians to deliver. You know, in mm. other words, to improve their livelihood. Mm. So they don't care. Let it be any other but, government. But, um, so uh, but, Nigeria, uh, but, but Mr. Hassan Abdul, who Nigeria. is to be blamed for that? Yes, you see, um, you blame, to portion a blame to some extent, uh, it's not difficult. I mean, it is difficult to say people are to be blamed mm. because uh, the purely issue of governance worldwide is run by elites. Elites, you know, they could be uh, uh, academic elites even who have the knowledge, who have the acquired, but we know there are political elites mm. who usually we call them politicians. Mm. Uh, they contest, they run a political party system. I mean, they run a party system, they mm. contested and they win. Uh, the electorate might not really be, they might be ignorant of the essence of the democracy itself. So sometimes you don't blame them because of that knowledge of the democracy. We have been hearing that word, nascent democracy, nothing. <laughs> you can be nothing things for more than 10 years, and people are still don't, don't, still don't understand. Mm. 
So uh, what, what I'm trying to say, it is difficult to say we have achieved, that's why I say yes, no. Uh, in the area of development, honestly, to my view, mm. we have not really achieved any significant, um, we, we, any significant move as far as democracy. The concerned. fact that we have had uh, but, but uninterrupted, uninterrupted, yes, uninterrupted you know, for coming. 25 years, but, but, but no that interruptions. Is, that issue of interruption, mm. that is the beauty of the whole thing. We have never had a little, that's why I said, my, my brother here has uh, said it already. Yeah. We have never had any military intervention for a long time, mm. even attempt there wasn't. So uh, that would have been an opportunity mm. for Nigeria at least to look, sit down, look at what are the indices of the development and see how they can impact on the life of the people. Uh, th that is why people up to now, if you meet any other person on the road, he doesn't care whether it's a civilian. What he's saying is we are suffering. And for since that period, you know, from uh, Obasanjo, who has taken over in 1999 mm. to date, you know, always will complain. This regime is better than this. This regime is better than that. This regime is better. <laughs> and we go so, on and on and on, yeah. Him. He has said it. Uh, and, and the reason is because the civilians, the civilian or the so-called democracy in court, mm. you know, uh, does not really deliver. You know, people are not really enjoying the what they call the dividend of the democracy. Mm. So I think from uh, the panoramic view, this is what I can say. Uh, we have achieved as far as democracy. And it is my assessment. Mm. If we are going in the nitty gritty of the whole thing, yeah. uh, it's very good. This one hour is not enough to analyze you know, all these lapses. <laughs> no, but you joined it. So we started two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> but let me let me let me let me ask the two of you. Um, he started this discussion with saying that uh, we are the most docile um, people in the world. Um, democracy, aside from you know um, dividends of um, I mean development, a shared prosperity, equity and justice, it is also about participation. You said that um, Nigerians do not even understand the concept of democracy. So 25 years down the line, whose responsibility is it to begin to teach people to understand the concept of democracy? That's one. And um, two, why will people not participate all over the world? You get to see um, regular engagement with the electorate on issues. There is the bit, there is, um, you know, need for accountability and people are always you know asking their leaders the right questions and they demand answers why is it that in our own um you know climb it is not happening it is either sentimental or selfish whichever way even if today you begin to ask people they said oh he's a house man because a yoruba man who is not his brother <laughs> is not the one there that's why he's asking those questions why didn't he ask his own brother when he was there as the president so who are we going to blame isn't that why the leadership is taking advantage of that that one we're docile two we are sentimental and three we ourselves are very selfish so i'll start from dr ali before i go to you right. <laughs> <laughs> well uh you have your question is just spelling out the 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 actual problem of the nation mm. uh, we are suspicions of we are suspicious of one another mm -hmm. the house man feels that uh, uh, the evil man is not doing his bit mm. and the Yoruba man is saying that that's why you see when uh book came he said mm. and now the whole Yoruba people are say are saying our lock our lock it is our own turn now mm. so you can harvest and do whatever you want to do you don't expect anybody to antagonize you. You don't expect any challenge from anybody from any quarter mm. because of what you said. They will say, when your own brother Buhari was there, what did you do? Mm. So, and we cannot continue running this country like this. Mm. We have to uh, take a leave from being a Yoruba person, from being an Igbo person, from being a, 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 a Hausa person to become Nigerians. And we can only be become Nigeria or became Nigerians when we actually go back to our classroom mm. and start teaching ourselves and our children how to become true Nigerians. Mm. Because as it is now, everybody is for himself in this country and for his people. 
And so if democracy has given us, has taught us anything, democracy has taught us how to become divided more mm. than to become a united nation. Mm. And that is why we are having our problems today. That's why the centre is no longer holding. Mm. And I, I quite, I, uh, I, I, I will quite say at this juncture that the kind of democracy we are practicing in Nigeria is not good for this country. Okay. We should, so, we okay. Should. Before we begin to look for our own for, let me go back to um, Dr. Hassan. Um, whose responsibility is it to begin to teach us that kind of democracy? I mean, what democracy is all about? That democracy is not the civil rule, but it is about development. So whose responsibility? Is it bringing up an old new national anthem to teach us that? No, national anthem is another <laughs> thing. That one is just one of the... Distractions. Yes, distractions. Yeah. Yeah. You see, the problem, nobody can teach people democracy. It's not something, you cannot learn democracy in a classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the democracy in the actual practice, mm -hmm. you can't say people should learn only in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's all about the people. Mm. Uh, but you, you learn... One is circumstantial, quite right. Mm. Uh, the people find themselves in a system that um, for a long time mm. has been interrupted. Mm. They are not used to all sort of party politics and what have you. Mm. So they will learn through this. That's what they call nursing democracy. Mm. Yes. They are learning. Mm. We are not learning in the class, but we are learning by experience. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the responsibility is more of collective. Uh, I can't say it's because just how, how the doctor said, uh, democracy, usually the major captains of the democracy are elites, as I have said, mm. because they know the system very well, mm. they know how to run the system, you know. So it is more or less their responsibility to put people on the records. But what is lacking is that issue of patriotism. Uh, of course, you didn't ask me about that issue. Yeah, but I must say it. Uh, now I was coming to that yes. because I was coming to the people themselves. Mm -hmm. And I want to cite an example. Yes. Yes. Um, in the last elections, yes. you know, we saw people who are just Okada, you know, drivers. We saw people who are not elitist at all. Mm -hmm. And they got into the system. Mm -hmm. And today they have even lost touch <laughs> with the constituency, <laughs> you know, that brought them, you know, to power. So it means there's something wrong. There's a disconnection somewhere. Mm. People who are down the ladder wants to become elitist. Mm. So their own thinking of democracy is I win an election and I belong to the elitist group and to hell with my constituency. Mm. Isn't it? Yes, uh, you have said it, but, 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 but the way I'm looking at it, you asked me a question on who is responsible. Yes. I wouldn't want to prolong it. I just want to pick it, you know, okay. pick it. You see, you can be educated, but you are not enlightened. And you can be enlightened without necessarily being educated. Mm -hmm. I have politicians who have never been to school in their life. They are enlightened. If I can cite an example of Tanko Yakase. In the early 1950s, Tanko Yakase was one of the frontline politicians. And let me tell you, he has never been to a formal set of school. He has just been, even the English he speaks, he speaks English. But, but because of that interaction and involvement in politics, you know, and better understanding of society, you know, Tanko Akasi, up to today, if not because of the age, mm. is one of the best prominent politicians that you can even count among Nigerians. But that apart, that's why I said we need education, and at the same time, we need enlightenment. Uh, people are not really enlightened. That's why you can go and give them 500, mm. you know, mm. 1,000 with a spaghetti and to go and vote for somebody mm. who will now spend four years and they will never see him until when the next election comes. If we are enlightened and we understand, look, this is what democracy, these people are going to represent me as we have status now talking about. I'm sending you and I'm sending you with a purpose. I'm not sending you to go and you reach yourself. I'm sending you to do a job for me, and mm. you should, you must be accountable, you know, and you must be responsible for whatever happens in the source. So that enlightenment is not on the part of the electorate. That's why the politicians capitalize on that, you know, throughout this period. 
they have been making that mistakes. Mm. This government is better than the other. This government is better because there was no focus, as the doctor said. You understand? But why? What is the purpose of that governance? Mm. Why do we elect people? What do you expect them to do? Mm. How can you hold these people responsible or accountable? Mm. You know, for the damages. So this is the problem. You have to understand this concept. A lot. I mean, in the first place. Yes. Before you go into the nitty gritty. Mm, no. Of whether the We've been talking policy. about um, accountability, holding no, people. Just, yeah, but that's have been on for a very long time. The question is, whose responsibility it is? Because the electorate themselves don't understand yeah. their own powers themselves, mm -hmm. and most of them, because of the level of poverty that they have found themselves, the thinking is no longer there. People don't think straight anymore. But let me come to elections themselves. The president has said we have, I think if you, you listen to his speech this morning, he said uh, democracy is not foreign, neither is it abstract, and that we've been having free and fair elections for the past 25 years. You and I know it's not true. We've had money politics. We've had, <laughs> we continue, continuously in our election, money play a greater role. So when you have elections that are not credible, because President Yaradua himself said the elections that brought me to power are not credible. And he took time, you know, to try to sanitize the system. So if we have elections that are not credible, we have money politics here and there. Do you think we're going to get it right? Yes, the, the issue, it is difficult actually, but that word free and fair. Mm. Uh, free, it has to do with... Um, the freedom to choose to yeah. the leader. That's what is called free. Mm. Fairness, it has to do with the outcome mm. of what you elect. Mm. Uh, these are the two issues in Nigeria that we have been battling with them. Mm. One is purely elitist. The other one is not. It's to some extent. People can be given, you know, or they have been given freedom to choose to vote, in mm. other words. Mm. You go, you vote. Freely, nobody will intimidate you on how to vote. But the outcome is that is where the problem is. Mm. That fairness. Mm. Uh, that concept has been, of course, I don't expect anything less than that thing to come from him. Mm. Uh, he, is, he has been part of these things. I know He's him. He's been part of the struggle. The struggles, I know him. We worked, I covered him until 1992. I was a young reporter. You know, me and Eredua, during Abiola, all these things, I indirectly participated in the whole thing. Uh, the, uh, the politicians, they will never accept that their election has not been, until when they fail. Anytime they fail election, they will not complain. But, but, but we know, we know there's a problem, and we accept there's a problem. So what do you expect him to say? Uh, issue of foreign, not foreign, is an indigenous. Debtor has said it. Mm. Our concept of democracy is different from any other democracy in the world mm. because of our attitude. Mm. You know, sometimes most of these things that we are talking about, we created them ourselves. Uh, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think the president now can tell you that he has not spent money you know, or he has not spent money for others to get into power. <laughs> Nobody can claim that. It means he's saying he has failed the election. So to me, uh, to me that word, he has said it, is more a political and it's normal. But, but let me be very frank with you. Nigerians are watching and I believe time will come when we that have been patient, that are always patient with the kind of this attitude of the politicians, our children, they will not accept it. We will have a new kind of system. You may spend the money, but you can't even go and face the people. Mm. Because look at the more content nature of the politics. Mm. Mm. People are becoming almost with power, no power. You know, they will find a voice. And there are so many factors responsible to that. Mm. That's why I said it's a broad aspect. <laughs> There's nothing that this government or this politics, this democracy brought apart from massive corruption. Polarization of these sentiments, you know, uh, religion, tribal, although it's an inherent mm. right from the early days of uh, Nigeria. Mm. I mean, the first democratic route in Nigeria we have had, that was in the early 60s. Mm. But we have not had changes. It's the same trend that is at the lower level. Mm. 
Mm. At the highest level, there's nothing like tribalism or religion because you still see them together. Okay. People are killing themselves at the lower level. Okay. So these are some. But of the still clinics. staying with you, um, is there anywhere in the world where there is free and fair elections? From what we've been saying. Yes, free and fair is relative. You see, uh, it, it all depends on the kind of system in place. A country that has a law and a country that abides by rules and regulations. I mean, the country that obey law. You mean what I mean by law? They have a law and they obey law. Even this Francophone nation that you see, if you go to Niger Republic, mm. when you say yes, it means yes. Mm. And nobody is above the law. But I don't have to tell you, there are so many people, you know, politicians today, no matter how of events they committed, mm. even this electrical, I mean, electoral fraud, mm. we see how it ended up in the court, mm. you know? So these are the kind of system that you see, fairness, it all depends on the nature of the country. You can't go to America, you know, and for example, because uh, America is always our, our focus. Yeah. We learn from them because we are mm. practicing mm. the liberal democracy. Mm -hmm. You can go to America and say you contest election, you maneuver your ways, you know, you give people's money and you match a winner. And somebody take you to court and say, okay, you go for it. It's not done. So, so you see, it depends on the country and what they respect as a law. Of course, it involves manipulations, mm. you know, in politics. Mm. But, but, but there is a limit which you can manipulate election. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot cheat, you cannot override the power of the people, you know, and rule over them. Mm. So, uh, Nigerian politics, the fairness, as you have said, uh, it depends on the country. We have seen countries where this, there are maneuvers here and there, okay. but they still maintain. But here, you maneuver and you go free. <laughs> okay. It just ended with the so, party. it's because there are no rules and there are no laws to be obeyed, yeah. and everybody is above the law no we don't know. follow the rules okay we don't follow the rest yes. but let me come to dr aliu i will tell you um you started saying that um the kind of democracy that we have is so crude and um, you know i'm um, the former president of Asanjo has always has also said it that we need to begin to think about another kind of democracy not the one that we have and just recently people are clamoring for regional um you know governments to come back and you know if you listen to president jonathan yesterday he is advising and cautioning against going back to regionalism and religious politics and all of that where do we find a balance the one that works for us today we said this democracy is not working people say go to regional government this one say go this way where do we find a balance a middle ground well the truth is that uh if you look at the democracy we are practicing today, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. We have two houses, two legislative houses mm. that are cost-bearing to the economy of the country. Mm. And, uh, and to, to even service them has become a huge problem today. We are talking about 60,000 Naira. The government is proposing 60,000 Naira minimum 62. wage. 62,000 minimum wage. And you have a people at the, uh, that call themselves legislators. Mm. Uh, uh, just l one aspect of their cause, their vehicle, for 150 million naira. If you want to divide that 150 million naira mm. by the 62,000 naira for an individual as a wage, it will have to take so many years for someone mm. to have achieved that 150 million. And yet, these are the people that are saying 62 million naira is too high. Mm. How much is their takeaway by, by their, their sitting allowances, or job allowances, newspaper allowances, all these allowances are great. So I think the best form of government for us as a country will have been uh, parliamentary, mm. where we have very few people to contain, and then the, uh, we, even we, we can continue without actually, actually going regional. We can have a parliamentary system without actually going regional, and then uh, caught the cost of uh, sitting, uh, uh, sitting people will not be permanent as uh, it is today. They are on salary, they are on allowances, they are on fuel allowances, transport allowances, mm. all these things. You can only come as a business to come and sit and give, give you sitting allowances and you go away. And this would cost, need to make cost for the, for them, uh, for the democracy not to be too attractive again 
for people that will be going killing themselves, stealing money just to fight for an election. So if the center is just trimmed down and then we are having a parliamentary system, we don't need to go to such elections. Mm. The head of a party can emerge. Just what is happening like uh, in some other uh, uh, democracy, mm. as soon as this person goes, we know the leader of the party, that of the ruling party can emerge or something. Mm. So we need to actually trim the cost of this democracy. It's too, it's too expensive for the country. And then we are, it's not giving us the results that we are looking for. It's rather making our politicians become more corrupt, endemic in corruption, and they even lack any sense of integrity. You could see a governor in this state telling, that, say, telling us without shame or fear that all the elective offices in his state, he sponsored them to, to become uh, uh, governor, to become... Uh, and nobody is raising become, any concern. Become, yeah. uh, legislators, yeah. that all the assemblymen in his state, he sponsored their... their, their his, so where did he get such money from? A governor become the state money becomes the governor's money. He has he has absolute uh, 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 this uh, control. Uh, control. No no accountability is not accountable to anybody. The governor sees the money of the state as his own pocket money, and he does what he wants with with, with it. Mm -hmm. And if not if there if not a country like Nigeria, how will an ex governor who is a minister come out to tell us in the public, serving minister of a government, that he has spent he is one that spent uh, sponsor everybody in the state to become governor, to become a deputy governor, to become a, a, a legislator, state assembly, state assembly member. member, and nobody said this. Where is the EFCC? Mm -hmm. Where are these uh, anti crime bodies? Mm -hmm. I mean, is there any? That is what my colleague is saying here. There are some. It's, it appears that some people that are actually above the law. Yeah. The laws of Nigerians are not working. The judiciary has absolutely failed this country, mm -hmm. and uh, the civil society is dead because they have to make you hunger, and uh, the, because of too much too much hunger in the nation, the civil society now they they, they have become uh, beggars. They run around the politicians to see if they can get one one nera or two nera, and nobody is saying anything. So the system is just. Docile, everybody is looking uh, uh, for uh, only God knows when anybody can, any, anyone can react. And so that's why you see the, uh, this uh, insecurity and so many ills coming out, uh, coming, uh, uh, coming in the country without any check or balance. Mm. Imagine a country like Nigeria in this, in this civilization have 1,000, sorry, I'm just digressing a little, have 1,050 porous border. No politician, no, no president, no anybody in the system, in the government that thinks that a country like this is very vulnerable. You have 1,050 open borders. Your economic activities cannot be sustainable. Your security activities cannot be sustainable. And that's where you get influx of foreigners, influx of arms and ammunition. And they are just, just like just uh, uh, see, looking at it without thinking uh, it is it, 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 Nigeria is in danger. And so uh, the, you, you, you like to, uh, like, let me borrow his word that you now see that as they are not patriotic, nobody is thinking of the nation. Yeah. All they are busy is their family, their pockets, and you know, it's, uh, uh, the, the government just came on board, they spent over $80 billion mm -hmm. uh, uh, in travel and all that. People are dying, and you are traveling, you and your family you are just spending money. And nobody is saying anybody, nobody is taking anybody. The legislators are not doing their oversight uh, uh, duties again. Mm. They don't check the press, the executive uh, from their SSs because okay. the executive are allowed them to continue their SSs. They, they, part, they, they do budget padding. When the executive brings his money, this is what I want to spend. Uh, spend. The legislators say, hey, let me put my own. They will add their own the way they like it. And nobody is saying anything about it because it's obvious that if I'm a thief, and you are a thief, you cannot challenge me as a thief that I'm a thief because you are a thief, I'm a thief, so we are all good in thief. <laughs> all right. in okay. So this is what is happening all in the right. nation today. Very and bad. for us to stop the thiefing, the thiefing that is going on, whichever level it is. Uh, but gentlemen, we'll take a short break at this point, and when we return, I'll be asking um, Hassan Abdul um, exactly what do we do to ensure that um, people are not above the law and that people obey the law when we come back
Welcome back. It's still a special democracy edition, and I still have my two gentlemen in the house. I have Dr. Sani Aliu and also Hassan Abdul, who is a public analyst and, of course, I'm a journalist. And um, so still, um, let me come back to you. Um, before the break, I was in you, and I'm still coming back to you. Now, money politics it has been our burn on this country. It has been the source of all our frustrations, all our problems. But aside from that, the primitive accumulation of wealth has also, you know, dealt a blow on our collective, um, you know, interest and progress. Today, um, you have the insurgency ravaging every part of the country from the northeast to the northwest. Um, just last week, about 62 farmers have been killed on their farms. And so we are expecting another food crisis any moment, you know, from now. And this is not... This is in isolation to the killings that happen every day, pocket of killing here and there. And the lawlessness itself has also contributed to that. I was talking to a friend um, last week. He said, every governor in the state has his own bandit, whether we like it or not. And they operate on a different scale. Some of them are their friends. Some of them are people they've had one or two things to do with. And some of them are their political talks that they've used to win elections so how do we begin to bring how do we bring sanity back to the system and remove this money politics that we're in today yes you have asked so many questions in one <laughs> but let me uh, say it that look the situation we find ourselves in nigeria today is a very very terrible situation I don't think there is any country that can survive, you know, with this kind of lawlessness and massive corruption. Mm. Uh, uh, of course, uh, these two key words uh, are the characteristics of the features of a failed state, any failed state. When a state becomes lawlessness, people no longer respect law and order, especially people at the top. Mm -hmm. What do you expect? People start killing themselves. Mm. We have had an example about this just of recent, uh, uh, the Rwanda issue, mm. which is a very typical example yes. mm -hmm. of a country that we run. But today, mm. Rwanda, you know, is surviving better, better than most African countries. But look at their ancestors, look at their experience. Uh, war has virtually ravaged or killed more than 65% to 70% of the citizens of the world. Mm. These people that are there are the people that have flown out of the country and later came back to inform their country. You see, uh, as I've just said earlier, uh, it's, it's an attitude that we must change. And this must come from the elite. Once you don't have your occupying a position, you don't see that position as a position to serve the people. Their patriotism or love in Nigeria. You see Nigeria first before you. When we were small boys, I knew this national anthem that they brought back. This adult, we love. As we are singing the national anthem, we, you know, it increases the love of the country. Mm. But these days, it's just a mere any other music that you see. People even don't care about it because nobody is willing to serve the country. People think of themselves first. And that is what cut across all the sectors, you know, judiciary, legislatures, and all these three arms of government. They are built on this ground. Dr. Sani has said it when he's talking about this parliamentary. Of course, I told, if I have an independent opinion at a forum, I told, look, whether a parliamentary or presidential, whichever one we practice, the situation remains the same, much as long as that corruption is there. Of course, there are other advantages of the parliamentary mm. because it was the first system we practiced in Nigeria, mm. uh, which is based on regionalism. And you can practice parliamentary without regionalizing the government, just like India, Venezuela, and quite a number of them. So you can, you can but, but the issue is law, supremacy of law. When their law is weak, when people don't see law, you know, as things to guide the country rather than just to punish others mm. and favor others. That is unfortunate. And this is purely an elitist affair. You don't expect me as a common man, you understand, who believe in democracy, so much in democracy. 
you know, supporting a candidate. And that candidate surrendered me to all sorts of crisis. Why he keeps his children at home, take them abroad for studies, and send me as a talk. You understand? He has to go and kill myself. Hmm. These are the kind of things that we have to change. It is difficult. It's not a one-day system. And it's a collective thing. But it must come from the elites. People at the government must see the politicians, must see themselves as... I, I keep wondering when the president is talking about Nigeria is our country, we have to survive it, we have to tolerate it, we have to sacrifice it, there's no country we have apart from But yet, you can see the certification. You know, 90% of Nigerians are crying. He's not feeling what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. So let us just be honest to ourselves. Instead of that sacrifice, you know, the Nigerian Republic, the man who has taken over the government, the people are pleased with him now. Mm. Look at how he did policies here and the subsidy, mm. you know, he subsidized so many things, mm. making the life of the common man. At least he's a military man, he's a dictator. But what the common man wants is the good governance. It's food on his table. Food on his table. Mm. So the, we have, the politicians have to see, they, you know, but they have to see, look, we are coming to power for the people and for the country, okay. not for ourselves. So it is difficult to say this is the road map, you know, to, 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 to the law, to the law and so, something. You know, mm -hmm. we have to find a way to change our attitude. Okay. I'm afraid with the kind of thing that is going, this governance that we see, most our politicians, many of them, I'm not praying, they will not survive this system. Because so many of our communities are now in crisis. People are being killed. So how can you represent people if you don't visit them? Just of reason I'm telling you, more than 35 people were killed in some of my community, in every my community, in here now. And the man we called for him to go and meet with people, he said, no, the representative. I mean, the member representing the, the constituents. Mm. He said, no, the last time he visited that place was almost six months ago. He spent all his time in Abuja and represented that community. But he will go there for so, election, isn't he? And he will, go there he for will visit for election. So you see, you see, you see, anarchy. Anarchy is the major threat to any democratic mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. and so we are faced society. with many threats now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is difficult. We have to now restore law and order. Okay. Not restore. We have to enforce law and order because. The law has already been in existence and we have been playing with it. Okay. So our, our politicians must change. Their attitude must change. Okay. Um, Dr. Sani, where do we find leaders who will be patriotic, who will drive the law and order, who will bring sanity um, to the system? Um, Nigeria is a model of democracy in Africa today. So we will not be advocating for military rule. We will not wish for that. We will not pray for that. But we also have to lead by, I mean, the leadership must lead by example. And some of the issues that he raised, lawlessness, massive corruption, these are the issues that need to be addressed. But where do we get those leaders? In 2015, we had a general, a one-time general that was fed by all. He became the president. And everybody was like, no, law and order has returned. Discipline has returned. And the mantra of change was all over. Change begins with me. Change begins with me. And six months down the line, everybody went back to business as usual. So it means something is wrong somewhere. Where do we get those kind of people? Where are we going to source them from? I remember quite uh, vividly well Mahama of Ghana mm. when he was lamenting after he lost his election during his, uh, uh, his uh, acceptance letter. Mm. He made mention of... Uh, him choosing somebody that if he had followed the the word of uh, uh, his former his predecessor mm. uh, to keep people around him that could challenge and remind him of the needs and why he is the president of Ghana, mm. he wouldn't have failed. So leaders, but that's too late leaders, today, isn't it's it? already too late for him. He, he, he was lamenting that if given chance, today mm. he's, 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 he's on board again, mm. trying to see if he can come back. Mm. If he's given chance, he will not go the same way he has gone. Mm. The problem is not per se the president. The problem is the people the president surround himself with, the yes sir people. Those people who are there 
we are waiting for such opportunity to steal, to perforate people who are there to enrich themselves, who are not, who don't care about. But that is because the system encouraged them to steal. Because if the system had not encouraged you to steal, you will not have anything to steal. And, uh, that is another. Let's say from Abdul. Mm. There is no enforcement of law. Mm. Look at what is happening between the, the, the cat and mouse game, between EFCC and Bello mm. of Kogi State. Mm. They, are, they, are, they are fooling themselves. They think they are fooling Nigerians. I, um, if I don't, if Bello uh, didn't come to boot, I will resign. I will let him resign. We are waiting for him to resign. He has not resigned up to now because up to now he couldn't uh, bring, uh, bring, uh, bring, bring Bello to, um, on board. Mm. So who is fooling who in this country? Mm. You see, the judiciary are having a lot. This, 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 this check and uh, unchecked is a deliberate uh, projection, so that, like I tell you, like I said earlier, so that they will have their feel, all of them. Mm. The the patronage from the executive to the legislators to the, the judiciary is like what uh, Elijah Abdul said that uh, the, at the at the elite at that top. They are one. They are one in all this crime. They are one in corruption. Why they, they are one in? They unify themselves up there because all they are interested in is how to enrich themselves, not mm. the country, mm. not to give service to the country. Mm. And unfortunately, where these leaders are found are found in the civil, uh, uh, civil, uh, civil, uh, uh, civil uh, uh, education. They are found in the, uh, you know, you, in the in the culture, in the maintenance of our culture and upholding of our uh, norms and and, and uh, you know uh, 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 values of the society, which deliberately the leadership has uh, exhumed that from the system of our education. Today, Nigeria, as a Nigerian, you don't know your norms, you don't know your values, mm -hmm. you don't have, you don't know anything about civic education, you don't know anything about patriotism. You only know about voting somebody through through my giving patronage of giving you money uh, to go and uh, cast your vote, and uh, uh, the, the pre you win your election, you are thinking of how to recoup your money, mm. and not to uh, 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 um, uh, I mean rescue or revive the economy, but how to recoup your money. Like a lot of people are saying, there's never a time that any president of Nigeria has spent so much money to win. The presidency like this current uh, administration and so with nigerians again are alleging that uh, the man is trying to recoup his money and that's why these subsidies that are removed today we don't feel it anywhere when you say you remove subsidy let's see the investment you are doing with that money somewhere so that nigeria will have rest of mind okay we are paying we are buying fuel at this cost but there is agricultural revolution going on. The implements, the, the works are, the fields are there, people are there, youth are engaged, they are working. And by the next three, four, five, ten years, Nigeria will be full sustaining, a uh, full sustained nation. Any nation that cannot sustain itself with food is a poor nation. And Nigeria is far, 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 far away from being a poor nation. Mm. If only we have purposeful leadership, mm. a directional leadership. Mm. Look at what is happening in Nigeria today. Even though we are, we are not too sure of it, uh, because Nigerians today, they can bring a lofty program only to, from the back again, they'll pack all the things. We have seen Operation Feed the Nation. When Obasanjo brought Operation Feed the Nation, we are very happy that there's Operation Feed the Nation. We didn't know that uh, Operation Feed the Nation means Obasanjo Farms Nigeria. Until he left the office with all the implements he imported for Nigeria Operation Feed Nation and, and sent it to his farm mm. as Operation as a Passenger yeah. Farms Nigeria Limited. Mm. So you began to wonder if these people are truly Nigerians. Mm. Where are they coming from? Are they imported from outside? Do we when you're asking where do we get leadership from? We cannot get leadership from anywhere outside outside except Nigerians. So if our leaders are so unpatriotic and we have seen how they enrich themselves and get away with it, nobody is saying any, any anything. Go to Obasanjo house, go and see the kind of house Obasanjo is living. Mm. Go to the, go to our ex president's house, go and see the, the kind of affluence they are. Nobody is checking them. Mm. Have you ever had any 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 EFCC in any team? In, uh, since the beginning of democracy, challenge or interrogate or investigate any president before? Mm. No. The this, this system is so designed for them to get away with their corruption mm. and Nigerian uh, citizens continue in their plenary and continue. In, uh, it, it, what is happening today is mm. that mm. the danger here that uh, Abdul is citing out is that the way the country is going today, 
the kind of the level of killings and insecurity that is pervading Nigeria today mm. mean we may not have Nigeria for tomorrow for anybody to come and lead. Mm. Because the moment the youth are angry, 40 of 40, about 50 percent, I'm not right, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'll be wrong, but I'm sure Nigeria have over 50 percent to 60 percent youth. Mm. And that is the vertebral bane of Nigerian, uh, of okay. Nigeria today. And right. so, if this youth realizes, like I said in twenty in two oh in two oh uh, in, in two oh one, that the moment the, the Nigerian youth realize there's gain in criminality, they will be out there doing it. When it started in uh, in Lagos, during Obasanjo, OPC we are throwing egg, and it will bomb. Become like bomb in in, in 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 some place in some part of Lagos, mm. and Obasanjo was celebrating. Then he would give uh, Ghani Adam uh, presidential jet to come to the to the villa and they drink a presidential coffee with him, mm. and he equally sponsored the guy to go back to school and so on and so forth. Today is the Arauna uh, Kafu celebrating a criminal and gave him Arauna Kafu in this nation mm. as a, a, a of Yoruba people. It means criminals have a place in the society, mm. so they are being celebrated and they are and calling so, the shot and they are calling the shot and that is. <laughs> what gave birth to uh, the Niger Delta militancy. Mm. And when we saw President Jonathan equally recognizing the militant generals... No. Yes, Yeradua gave them what is called uh, amnesty. amnesty. Mm -hmm. But Jonathan was actually telling, saying, uh, acknowledge them as militant generals. Okay. And <laughs> drinking and coffee with them again. And in 2201, I said it that if the ordinary northerner realize there's gains and they are being celebrated in this manner, they'll be going around with bombs it has happened in this okay. country 2001 I said this and it has happened in this country and today I'm saying it here clearly if they did not do something about this thing no politician can ever go back to his community again and what, if they are not careful they will be slaughtering politicians on the street of Nigeria Okay. You cannot use a state of the art vehicle in this country again because the people are already getting angry. If the president is disconnected with what is happening with the society, we are here to tell the president that Nigerians are very angry. Yeah. This 150 million naira used in buying vehicles to these people, yeah. Nigerians youth are not happy about it. You better do something about it before it becomes a, a situation where there will be anarchy, where you, you as the president can no longer control this country. It's okay. the truth. All right, so we are hitting a point of no return. And the earlier we do something about it, the better. But I'll still go back to finding the purposeful leadership and the kind of people. He said we cannot import people from the space. We have to find people around. When Ruto went to the U.S., he told the world that I was being sponsored by my friends. I didn't take state money to do that. That's President Ruto of Kenya, his last trip to the U.S., when the man in Senegal, the young man in Senegal, <laughs> took over office, he said, I don't want people to stand at the airport and wait for me to greet me when I'm coming back. I want to travel very light and simple, and I want to come back quietly to face my work. He said, when people go and wait for you and parade for you, it means, you know, they're going to just waste some office hours and spend the whole day doing nothing. But coming back, purposeful leadership. Each time the president said, I feel your pain, I want the poor to breathe. You see that in the speech, but you don't see in reality. It means that whoever writes the speech to the president is trying to reflect the mood of the nation. That's not his fault that the president is still disconnected after saying, I feel your pain. What we did with subsidy, we said there's a cabal. That's what we've been hearing. But we created another cabal when we give so much money to the governors in terms of, you know, um, federal allocation, and here they are saying they cannot pay 62,000 Naira, and people say, but you have more allocation that you had here. So we created sub another cabal, another level of senior cabal of subsidy. But my question is this, if you pick somebody on the street today, a regular Nigerian, and you give him any political office, you'll be amazed with the recklessness and the massive stealing that he will do. And that boils down to the same system that we talked about, the system. So who is going to correct the system, the systemic failure that has encouraged lawlessness, has encouraged a massive corruption, has encouraged brutality and the killings that we see? Who is going to affect that system?
Honestly, the questions we have raised, you have just repeated the questions. We are the actors mm. of the democracy. We are citizens of the country. Mm. Nobody is an alien, just like how Dr. Asani said. Mm. We are all Nigerians. Mm. It's an attitude that we must change. Mm. And, um, but people me, don't want to change let attitude. Let you, no, no, my, my concern you. is this. People don't want you. to change attitude. They don't want to change that's attitude. I'm, I'm coming. You see, you are trying to be... Let me just answer you the way you ask. Mm. Uh, look at the system itself. Mm. You see, it is deliberate. Nigerian democracy was created mm. in this way. Mm. Every day we keep amending laws. And the elites who are there, mm. they are amending laws to ensure or to perpetuate in the governance. Mm. That's why you will find in the political or in the party system, in any, any states in the whole world, there's not any country that will sit down, the government will say, okay, this is what we feel should be done. You have to support the political parties. We have seen what Babangide did. He created the political parties. After he left, we have seen it's not the people. Mm -hmm. This country you are talking about, the people create the political parties. Mm -hmm. They form the political parties. Already there is a guideline rules to form the political party. But in Nigeria, there's so much interference because the system is the elites, the political elites are the same in nature. How would you expect somebody, an ordinary man, no matter how competent person he might be, you understand? He wants to be a member, contest, because you can vote and vote for your fundamental human right to participate in politics, whether you are upper or lower. But the constraint is the parties, the political parties, they made it impossible for an ordinary person, no matter how, how good that person is, to contest elections. But we saw ordinary people won elections no, in I'm the coming. last... No, I'm no, coming. but ordinary people no, won elections. I'm telling election. you That's what I'm saying. Ordinary people it's won elections. It's not the issue of winning. We have said it here. Mm. One man sponsoring more than 20. Mm. When you are being sponsored... With state funds. You understand? Mm. With state funds. Mm. We have said it here. Mm. But the issue is we are talking of the system. Who corrects that system? That's my question. That, that, Who will correct me. the system? That's what I'm saying. Mm. It's we. It's we. The elites. But you are also saying the that, that we're not changing our attitude. We're not changing our attitude. No, no, we have to so, change the attitude. So who is that going to enforce be. that? Because if there is no, no enforcement, no, people no, are not going to change attitude. Any, no, no, no. That's why I say circumstance change people. Mm. Uh, because we have never had an experience of a revolution. Revolution can be spontaneous, can be... If I'm saying a revolution, I'm not saying revolution where, you know, everybody know. You revolutionize a system, you understand, mm. by yourself. Mm. You sit down, look at the problems, you know. When the problem is becoming so complex that you cannot even run the but system. But all over the it's world, somebody will lead. Down. Somebody will lead that change. No, you, Either you, subtly no, or somehow. No, somebody no, will begin no. to bring it Sa to the, you know, conscience of people. Yeah, circumstance will come mm. when people, even the elite themselves, mm. just like how Dr. Sainz cited an mm. example, mm. they have to sit down and they put things together. Okay. Because they know, they said, you cannot rule anybody, you understand, apart from the people. Okay. You are there for the people. So when the people now resisted yeah. against you, then you know what it means. Okay. I'm going to give you people 30 seconds each. I'm talking about the security situation we are today and the level of massacre that we see around. What will be the urgent you know, steps to begin to curtail it? I'm not saying we're going to get it 100% so that we don't get to a point of no return. Well, as a message to President Tinubu, or for this 30 seconds, is it is high time Nigeria government create another, another security organization dedicated and mandated to curb this menace called maybe counter terrorism agency, an agency giving that mandate to ensuring that uh, the borders of Nigeria are, are, are protected and the, the and counter uh, terrorism, uh, both kinetic. Uh, and uh, non connected aspect of countering terrorism. Mm. We must create an organization. It is high time for us to create, uh, especially being among the first ten. A matter of emergency? It's uh, as urgent as possible. Okay. The military is not their purview, the police is not their purview. All the security agencies currently, 
this not their purview they are just helping us to manage the situation and therefore uh, the, the, nobody can hold them responsible for 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 action or inaction. Mm. So it is high time Nigerian government. I'm calling on Tinubu to make sure that he creates a counter terrorism agency. Let him look uh, as Obasanjo did when there was a uh, uh, infraction into uh, 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 critical uh, infrastructures in Nigeria. When he looked around, he saw uh, civil defense and created them. Mm. Today we have organizations like NESO. He can look at them. They are countering terrorism. He can give them that mandate. So that the cost of training and the cost of uh, uh, creating the organization is, should, shouldn't be much on the, on the government. And they're already on ground with the military and they, they can actually give a quick solution to solving this mess. Yes, my simple, let me tell you this insurgency that we're talking about. Um, in one way, it's politicized. The politicians created them for a purpose anyway. Yeah, on the other hand, the business people created them just for a purpose. Too. Okay, profit. So it becomes, it becomes a business. Venture. Venture. People venture into it and they make a lot of profit. At the detriment of the nation. I think I will subscribe to his uh, own thing, but this time around, I wouldn't want to call it agency. Uh, let it be a tax of a tax force, whereby there are good, good generals. Samaritan, let me just use this word in Nigeria today, which you can now pick. They don't have money. They don't belong to this class. They are not politicians. They are nothing. Let President Tunibu sit down, pick these people. Many of them are retired. They are there in their homes. They have the idea. They have the capability. And let him have that commitment. That political way that whatever they recommend, you know, they would, in fact, let the committee become the task force become more powerful, even there's some other sub security outfits. Mm. Because we find out that this business involved all the securities personnel. Mm. They are behind many of them. They are being used, you know, for all this kind of crisis. So, I mean, violence. So, I would have to suggest let him set up a task force or an agency uh, using the same old generals old corners or any other person that you think yes is of use because this is a purely a security affair okay and we don't need any other thing like politics politicians or any other thing like business people okay this is purely it should be a general affair it should be a general affair okay and um, i don't want to recommend uh, you know the specific areas but let me be very frank with you if we can have that task force mm. that can enforce and you are giving optimus power all this nonsense will end. And just, a time frame. Just, just like yesterday, mm. Niger, some groups in Niger, the ridiculous Nigerian government, that they allow some rascals, so-called bandits, you know, to be killing people in Zampala and Katsina, you know, while they arrested some of their kingsmen here. So this is really an affrontation. And uh, we have to sit down and look at it. All right. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, I'm afraid we just have to leave it here. I'm Dr. Sani Aliu, Commander General, um, Neighborhood Enlightenment and Sef Safety Organization, NESO, and also um, Hassan Abdul, a political analyst and journalist. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And from all of us here, it's bye for now, and do join us next time for another special package. My name is Medina Azaki. <music>